All right, joining me now is the aforementioned Senator Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee, who voted against the continuing resolution and uh, opposes all this omnibus bill stuff, as far as I can tell. Senator Blackburn, thank you for helping us today. And I thought Rand Paul pretty, you know, put it, I think he put it pretty succinctly, giving up the power of the purse and emasculating Republican power. Why is the Senate leadership back in this omnibus process? Well, Larry, as you know, I have said if we want to get this spending under control and inflation under control, what we should do is have a CR, get into next year. We need to do three things. We need to freeze federal spending, federal hiring, and federal employee salaries so that we can begin to cap this and work it back down. We're going to spend over six trillion with the T, six trillion dollars. We have not seen the omnibus bill. We are hearing that it is full of earmarks and special interest projects. That is something that I oppose. I think that it would be the good thing to do to let the House Republicans take a swing at this thing, see if they can reset some of these baseline numbers, and then as you know, if we want to get this under control long term, you got to have a balanced budget amendment that balances without taxes. You have to move away from baseline budgeting and go to zero based budgeting. And you have to look at these different spending components and make certain that you are using every single efficiency using all technology that will help to get the cost of government and delivering government services down. You know, Senator Blackburn, it's just uh, one of the points that, that Rand Paul made, which is a point that my buddy Steve Moore has made, and I wholly endorse it, and I believe you do too. There are existing law, there are budget caps. The caps get violated yes. every year because they are waived uh, by 60 votes. Now, if you had 41 Republicans, 41 Senate Republicans who would stand up and not waive these budget caps, that would be a start. That would create automatic spending cuts. I mean, it wouldn't solve the problem. It wouldn't get to all the points that you're making, but it wouldn't be a bad start. There are 50 Republicans right now. All we need is 41 votes. Why not? Wouldn't that be better than the omnibus bill? Uh, well, of course. And keeping those budget caps would be a great thing. I would love it if we had 41 Republicans who said, no, we're not going to waive the caps. We're going to keep the caps. And no, we're not going to do an omnibus and spend another $6 trillion. What we're going to do is a CR and then come back with a Republican-led House and do a budget that makes sense for the American people. It is their money. It is not government's money. It is not any one senator or any one representative's money. It is the people's hard-earned tax dollars that are funding this. And people are saying the spending is out of control. And I, I, I'm hearing they may be hard pressed to get 218 votes in the House to send this thing forward. So we'll see what happens next week. Well, that's another point. I mean, I don't understand why Senate leadership would undermine or betray a new Republican leadership in the House. Why not, as you said, why not give them a shot? at cutting spending. But you can't do that if you if you take over all of next year's spending, then you're going to go into, you know, the summer and the fall before you get to FY24. I mean, what is the I don't understand the politics of it, Senator Blackburn, and I totally disagree with the economics of it. Well, and what you need is a budget policy that is going to make sense for the American people. When you go back and look at 2019 numbers and you look at what we were spending in 2019, and we were right around $4 trillion, which is too much for you and me, Larry. But for a lot of people, they were fine with that number. And then you look at all that has been added 
through the CARES Act, through the Inflation Reduction Act, through the Infrastructure Bill. And here they come again wanting a lollapalooza of a spending bill with earmarks for big projects for special interest. And the American people cannot afford this. This administration, this out of control spending is too expensive for the American people because what is going to happen? They're going to then turn around and say, oh, look at this, we've got to raise taxes because look at what interest on the debt, mm. this $31 trillion of debt, look what the interest is costing, costing us. Oh, we've got to do that. Oh, by the way, we've got to raise the debt ceiling mm. because we're going to have to spend more. All of these are issues that come up because we do not get the spending under control. Let's give the Republican House a shot mm. at getting these numbers back under control. That's such a key point. I don't know why it's being overlooked. Uh, you, you just, I mean, that is just such a key point. Just as the last one, you know, a bunch of economists are looking at this high inflation which has plagued our economy for two years, and it looks like right. a recession is coming as the Fed clamps down. But you know, a lot of the increase in the nation's money supply, Senator Blackburn, it just came from Treasury checks flooding our bank accounts. So it gets scored as increases in the money supply. But it was all this expense spending, COVID spending. And I think, I guess my question to you is, one of the things that has to be stopped here, I think, Democrats want to make COVID spending programs permanent by loading them into the baseline or That's loading right. them into mandatory spending. And not one of them, Senator, has any work requirements or workfare. That just seems like a hidden agenda that's not so hidden. Yes, and I, as I have talked with some of the House appropriators this week, they continue to say, don't do this. Let us have a shot at it. Mm. Let us have a, the opportunity to go back in and do a review and get some of this spending out of that mandatory column where it got pushed during COVID. So I am all for giving the House Republicans the opportunity to do some good work for the American people and to lessen the tax burden not increase the tax burden. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Senator Marsha Blackburn. We appreciate it very, very much, as you got always. It. All right.